9 millimeter versus 357 Magnum DRT, Dynamic Research Technologies, Elite Series ammunition. So this is very interesting ammunition. Um, you know, they have ammo that's more of a fragmenting ammo, but this is more of a traditional cup and core hollow point from what I can tell just based on the way the ammo looks and the bullet weights. Our 9 millimeter is a 124 grain. Our 357 Magnum is a 120 grain. I'm going to use my 5 inch MP 2.0, MP 9 for the 9 millimeter, my 4 and an eighth inch Smith and Wesson 686 to test the uh, 357 Magnum. Our 9 millimeters rated at 1150 feet per second. Our 357 Magnum is rated at 1476 feet per second. So, pretty average range for ammunition like that. However, the industry standard for most companies is to use 4 inch barrels for both. So, we might get more velocity with the 9 millimeter than rated. So, what's interesting about this ammo, I don't fully understand what they're trying to say here. Because um, on the back it says, DRT Elite Series utilizes a core made up of high density metals to increase its effective range. Proovy, Proovy, that's what it says. Proovy less wind drift and provide tremendous terminal effects. Interesting here. So I don't know exactly what that means. I mean, high density metals typically means lead. The surface of this almost looks like a solid copper, like it would be copper through and through, but I don't think it is. A 357 Magnum is a different bullet style. Just a jacket at hollow point from what I can tell. So we're going to test this, see what we get. So I'm going to go through the chronograph, see what kind of velocity and accuracy we get at the same time. And I'm going to hit my 10% clear ballistic gel blocks here. I'm just going to go into plain clear ballistics to see what the best potential is of those rounds. See how they perform, how they expand. You know, generally ammo will expand if there's no barriers there. Then after that, I'm going to do more of our real world simulation. I have four layers of denim. I'm going to put on the first part of this block here after three inches of clear ballistics to represent our pectoral muscle of a quarter inch medium density fiber board that will represent our ribs or sternum. That'll be more of our real world simulation. We'll see how the ammo compares that way. And then I am going to shoot up my steel to see what kind of practical accuracy I can get with these. So let's get started with this test. All right, first up we have our 9mm rated at 1150 feet per second. I'm about 4 yards from the chronograph, 5 yards from the target. Let's see if we can get here with our 9mm, see how close we get to 1150 feet per second. 1182. 1136. 11.46. 11.26. 11.42, so I'm not really impressed considering I have a 5 inch barrel and our average is basically that 11.50. 357 mag right at 1,476 feet per second. Let's see how close we get to that with my 4 inch barrel here. 14.29 14.03 oh three. 1464, 1476 exactly, 1453. So again, below rated velocity. Ace ejection is a little sticky. So, but you know, we got okay velocity. It's in a typical range of pretty good velocity. You know, I was thinking honestly, I was gonna get like 1200 feet per second, because sometimes these off-brand companies you never know what you're gonna get and something like that but we got uh, pretty good velocity so let's hit our ballistics gel block with these and see what we get all right let's do our best potential plain clear ballistics nine millimeter all right let me hit that with our 357 magnum now let's go take a look at that All right, so I didn't realize this was going to be kind of a fragmenting type round. We have a massive amount of 
explosion expansion in this first three inch piece here all kinds of busted up pieces you can see it up here that's the 357 on top it's hard to see the uh, nine millimeter nine millimeters down there on the bottom 357 on top so it's really hard <laughs> to tell what's going on here i didn't realize it was going to do this if i would have realized that i probably wouldn't have even shot this because that is a pain in the butt to try to dig that stuff out if you want to reuse these gel blocks I cannot see the core of that nine millimeter. It does look like it did a ton of damage. A lot of that's air bubble damage though. So probably it just blew such a big hole in there that sucked some air in there and it did that. Uh, but still our penetration is pretty good here at, um, we're right there touching 16 inches. So it's not over penetrating or anything like that. Our 357 mag has, looks like jacket separation. It looks like our core went to right to 19 inches and that, or our jacket and our core this little itty bitty piece of a core went to maybe uh, 20 and a half inches something like that so that's that's interesting i wasn't expecting to see that uh, so let me uh put on our medium dead state fiberboard rib simulation in the denim and see how they compare that way all right four layers of denim three inches of clear ballistics a quarter inch medium density fiberboard nine millimeter Right. Let's hit the outdoor 357 Magnum now. Let's take a look. All right, so that's some pretty interesting results. Um, you know, a lot of fiberboard pieces, but when I look at this, this is interesting here. Um, yeah, so our 357's up here, and our nine millimeters down here. It doesn't appear that through the denim, we, we didn't get that fragmentation with the nine millimeter whatsoever. It just looks like a, kind of like an FMJ impact. Once we got here, you know, we don't really see anything going on. We see some drug um, denim and whatnot, and it just looks like most of those pieces that were supposed to fragment didn't do anything. And we got about 20, 20 and a half inches, 20, 21 and a quarter, something like that, 21 and a quarter. Um, so that's interesting. Now with our 357, we actually did get enough velocity that that denim didn't matter and it still started to do that weird fragment thing there and it did that here and the first three inches down here in the bottom here that's the 357 through the mdf and or through the denim and without the denim it's up there so it still did that same thing which i had no idea that it was going to do and we have these little pieces all up in here there's one here at seven and a half mark the eight and a half mark about the uh ten and a quarter mark and our core went to 15 inches so that's interesting i i can't really say whether that be effective or ineffective i do know energy dump is important but energy dump where you know you're busting off pieces of that i'm not sure i'm not sure how i feel about that but that's your results with that. So let me shoot at the steel. You know, it, it does say on the box that they're more accurate than other rounds could do the high density metal. So I am curious about that. So let me shoot the steel, see what kind of practical accuracy I get with these. All right, so here's a close up look at this gel block here before I cut into it. Just nasty. Let me cut into this and try to pull these cores out of here. All right, so I'm not even gonna do measurements on these because it is so difficult to even show um what's going on and, and i don't think showing the measurements is going to really make any difference here here's our nine millimeter sure that that uh, jacket might be expanded to three quarters of an inch this is the core that was in it and basically this stuff busts up into powder there's all kinds of powder inside this gel here just all over the place it's powdered a powdered mess of powdered metal so it's definitely meant to be frangible, which it doesn't even say on the box. You know, some of their ammo is frangible, and it says it on the box. This doesn't say it. 
this made it seem like based on the bullet weights that they're more of a traditional cup and core and they are not our 357 magnum we lost more of that uh, pedals busted off and we have a little bit less core just powdering everywhere in here and these are our plain gel shots now through our medium density fiberboard here's our nine millimeter not much going on there expanded to probably 40 diameter nothing too impressive there our 357 mag this is the le the most of it i could get here a mangled up piece of jacket here here's some of the metal it's more powdered there's some powdered denim pieces that's what that is and more of this powdered metal that you know if i squeeze it enough i can bust it up it's powdered so 357 playing gel 357 mdf nine millimeter playing gel nine millimeter mdf so not impressed with this ammo at all because i'm just not really sure that would do but i'm pretty certain it would not do better than a traditional cup and core hollow points interesting though so let's look at those bullets close up all right 40 yards from the target i am curious about this whole wind drift high density metal thing it says it reduces wind drift better than others so 40 yards i guess would be a good place to start nine millimeter see if i can hit the target Some of those dropping are probably just me, but it does seem like it's pretty accurate at that range. Accurate enough. 357 mag. See what this does. Alright, so it hits the target there. Um, I was actually aiming right about here in that silhouette, so they are definitely dropping low. Case ejection, again, that's not very good. <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, so let me back up a little more and keep trying to hit with these. All right, 75 yards from the target. Why not? You now these were shooting kind of, kind of low for me, so I'm curious what we'll get here. So 9 millimeter, I'll just aim kind of center high on that silhouette that was me all right i'd say those are pretty accurate that one shot you know i had this trigger pulled back i'll so here it's empty what I was doing, you know, and it kind of, you know, this hinge trigger, I like this hinge trigger, but I was like, kind of like back and then like, I'm not sure. And I felt it move forward a little bit and then I pulled it again. That like the second that went off, I knew not going to hit. So 357 Magnum, I got one in here. I got six more in my pocket. Let's see here. I'll go single action with this one shot. See what happens. I'm aim kind of center, center high. It doesn't seem like it hit that fast. So that 120 grain is definitely losing some momentum. So I'll keep going with this, see if I can make any more hits. Definitely missed a few times there. I could see dirt fly. It almost seemed like, you know, the first shot that I made, it didn't move very fast. And then the next one's shot faster. Like there's some inconsistency there. Um, see what I'm seeing here. It just kind of reminds me of how, when I would hand load with um, very fast burning powders that were meant for nine millimeter. 
stuff like tight group and whatnot and I would go over the charges and just whatever. That's kind of how these are shooting for me where the velocities aren't super great. Snappy recoil, but not heavy recoil in your palm. Swelled cases. <laughs> so I would suspect that might be what they're doing there. But overall, what I'm gonna say about this ammunition, I'm, I'm gonna say it's not bad. Um, especially the 357 Magnum. What I saw with that, it, it looks like it'd be acceptable. Everything we got with that 357 Magnum, you know, it, it did what I guess it's meant to do, where it fragments fragments apart. I can't say it's a bad thing because when we look at like something like the 125 green semi jacket at a hollow point, forever it's had a 96% one shot stop uh, rating based on real world numbers, real world situations. And part of that is because when that semi jacket of hollow point peels back, then it, it busts off those pieces and you have secondary channels. Well, this looks like it's designed to do that from the get go. It's, so it's, really it's doing that. It's a very light bullet moving out pretty close to the right velocity doing that. And it did it through the denim and MDF and it did it with in plain gel. So I'm gonna say, just trying to compare that to the old 357 mag i'm going to say it probably would do as well as one of those old school 357 magnums just just based on what i'm seeing here the nine millimeter that's a little bit different here um with nine millimeter you know we saw some big rapid busting off pieces and fragmentation in the plain gel but once it went through denim we went uh, to a to a threshold where it's not going to happen and it just becomes more of a, just a solid bullet. And I could tell by looking at that and what we saw to that gel, that's not gonna do a whole lot of damage. You know, probably not a whole lot more than a full metal jacket, but yeah, it looked imp impressive in plain gel. So considering I used a five inch pistol, five inch barrel, which is longer and can be shooting f way faster than any of the, the pistols you guys are carrying and shooting, I would say no on the nine millimeter because you could get so much better than that. I mean, even even a basic Hornady American gunner with an XT people, it's going to be better than this. But with that 357 Magnum, it was pretty good. So interesting ammunition. I'm not particularly impressed. I'm going to have to throw away a good pound of that ballistics shell. <laughs> I don't like that. Uh, but it is what it is. The 357 mag seems okay. And the one thing that stood out, I guess what I would have to say is the 357 and the 686 had a little bit less felt recoil than typical 357 Magnum, but it was still pretty stout. So that's what you get today. I'm not super impressed, but eh, 357 is okay. So that's what you get. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching. <laughs>